welcome to another exciting episode of the official podcast, the official Booster Gold fan club podcast. Today, we're joined by a fellow Booster Gold enthusiast who's like a primordial listener of the official podcast, Swagger Souls. Dude, I love Booster Gold. Are you kidding me? That's what I've been saying. Booster fucking gold, man. My favorite fucking, my favorite superhero. Well, let's not give him more credit than he's due. He's not really a superhero. He's more of just like (laughs) fucking stagehand in a case. man with a suit. Not with that attitude. But yeah, uh, I don't know if you boys knew this, but Swagger Souls has apparently been listening to the official podcast since pretty much before he started doing YouTube. So this, this is a lesson to all fans out there. You too could be the next Swagger Souls just by listening to the official podcast. That's right. It's been confirmed. Do it. How, how long have you been listening? Since like the uh, Kraken episode. Something Jesus. like that. I think, what, number 12 or some shit? Yeah, that, that was an early episode. Yeah, pretty early. He's been on the bandwagon of the official podcast for a long time, investing in it like a cryptocurrency that isn't plummeting. You- I dig it, dude. I'm ready to crash so out. Then are you, wait, if he's investing cash in it, are you, when are, you pay, are you one of our Patreons? Will we see Swagger <laughs> Souls in the ticker? <laughs> nope. So I don't do Patreon, my dude. Oh. He's been freeloading, just stealing our podcast secrets oh, for his own podcast. Piece of shit. Yeah. How, how could you? You so think what we do is easy? Yeah, you think really? we don't deserve money for what we do, Swagger? Swagger, you have no fucking concept of what it is to make content for the internet, okay? <laughs> yeah. I, you know I run a podcast, right? You know I'm on a podcast. Sometimes you have to work five, maybe even ten minutes a day. <laughs> <laughs> fucking grueling. Oh. No, dude, making memes, making memes on the internet, hours, mm. hours of time, mm. honing your craft like a Japanese swordsmith. I don't know why people <laughs> fold the meme over, hammer it down, <laughs> fold the meme again until you have amazing stainless memes. And then one day you can show it to Elon Musk on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, did you see that yeah. shit on Joe Rogan? Yeah, that was the greatest. Dude, meme. Elon Musk is the dude. I love that man. He earned yeah. a lot of my respect as well. Like, the man goes on there and openly smokes a blunt, but if someone did that, like, in his factory, they'd be beheaded in front of the whole crew. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. He'd be the Tesla crash crash test dummy. Oh, my he God. He didn't smoke it. He took one little puff. <laughs> and what pissed me off is that all of the potheads, all of the kind of people, the same people who, when there's a new study on Reddit that shows that you know, pot can literally cure cancer. It's the miracle drug. It's a literal miracle. It's true. They'll upvote it to the front page. And this very same people turn around and all of a sudden weed is this evil thing that makes you a man, baby, asshole. And we got to, you know, uh, of course, Elon Musk would smoke weed with Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> big shock. He's, he's going through all a of, midlife crisis. Yeah. That's yeah. what I heard all a lot. Of a sudden, all of a sudden, they all turn into the most Puritan... Amish non douchebags about somebody smoking weed, which he didn't even do. He took one little puff, he gave us one great screenshot, Wait. and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> His fucking face was fantastic. <laughs> but the thing, like, I looked at that. He didn't even inhale. He, he he took a fat fucking rip, but it was all in his mouth. He was pretty much tasting it like a cigar. Well, I mean, he's a. Then he fucking handed it back to he's, Joe. He's and then Joe smoked the rest of it. He's a novice. You gotta get. You gotta cut him some oh. slack. Like that was basically watching like a toddler take their first sip of wine or something, and then like recoiling in disgust. He was drinking. Yeah, the real story would be if he if he smoked a dabby patty. <laughs> Have you ever heard of that? Or did, I think I coined that term with my friends. <laughs> what was that? Well, you want to you want to hear the story of the dabby patty? Yeah, yeah, what's you, the dabby patty? What's the story of your house made meme? Do it. So back in my in my college days, um, I, I believe I was first or second. Uh, yeah, I think it was second year. I like we couldn't smoke on campus, and smoking on campus was stupid because if you get caught with weed in your dorm, you're pretty much fucked, and then you're you, you have to commute. And I live far away from my from the college I attended, so that was not on the table. So what I do is I'd get weed, get my friends, and I'd say, "Yo, let's walk out to the smoke spot." And so the smoke spot was like maybe a mile away, mile and a half away. So it took a good amount of time to trek there with weed. And we go to this place called the Crack Shack, right? It, uh, Appetizing name. It, no, oh, dude, it was, you, you think it, it, it's a shithole, and it was, but it was an okay shithole. Uh, if you actually want to want to see what it looks like, I have it in my 100K uh, special. On my channel, I did actually did like went a walk there. through tour. Oh, you did. Okay. Oh no, I, I I did like this. I just wanted to immortalize it 
in on my channel on the internet because it meant so I much spent to you. a lot yeah. of time there. Oh yeah. yeah, I spent a lot of time. It was like my second dorm. I had a couch and everything. It was great. But anyways, we ended up bringing a bong there and my friend also had dab wax on it. So we sit down and what we decide to do is we pack half of the bowl, half of the half like the piece with weed and then we put this like beautiful hamburger patty of dab wax in the middle and then we covered it with more weed so you'd be able to scorch the weed on top and then it would also vaporize the dab fill the chamber and then you let it rip like a beyblade and man you saw you saw stars you were off your ass and we called it the dabby patty it's a treat very good how'd you even trust yourself to get home (laughs) oh i didn't dude i was i was on some like next level shit it fucking, but dude, those those mile walks on the way back were so nice. Except for when it was hailing or raining, but that didn't stop us. We still fucking did it. Do you think big drug dealers ever, like the huge cartels, get upset they can't legal a pet patent their creations, like new drugs? I mean, it's it's hard to patent a strain of a plant. Uh, cons- considering oh, that okay. you know That's anybody can grow it with I seeds, meant, like, the way you put it together, like your Krabby Patty. Oh, like right? like a recipe, yeah, like yeah. patent a recipe no, for it. Oh, yeah, maybe they have their cartel wars and they behead and skin each other to send a message in case you're selling their products. But there's got to be something in them that gets a little jealous of the big pharmacy companies that can legally sell addictive substances and patent them too, and then oh, sell man. them the solution also. I'd be super upset if I was like a, let's say I was the swagger souls of Dabby Patties. Like that was my claim to fame in the drug world. I'd be so upset if I saw like a <laughs> pharmaceutical company do something similar, like a hamburger of Oxycontin or something. <laughs> no, yeah, that's with, a thing with now. methamphetamine buns. Right? The, the guys who make the Oxy, they're now selling the solution to it. The yeah, thing that's I supposed know. to get you off the addiction. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. It's true. It's having your cake. So then you get addicted it. to the solution. Is the solution <laughs> just as addictive? <laughs> oh my god! I think I think we just we just came up with something beautiful here. Yeah, it's the perpetual motion machine of the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that'd be the dream. Oh, man. Man, genius. Just make money on drugs. Yeah, I don't think Elon was like ripping Beyblades of weed. Just took a little huff <laughs> no, of it. No, I don't think so either. I don't think that guy could could function on weed. Considering, like, you know, he runs, like, five fucking companies. I think he said at some point in the past that weed makes you unproductive. I don't know if that's first-hand yeah. experience or what. Could be first-hand. I mean, the guy's an engineer. Like, you have to you have to be sharp with it. Yeah. Uh, for me, though, I smoke weed as a, quote-unquote, sleep aid. So, like, that's what I use it for. But I also edit, uh, you know, subtitles and shit when I smoke. Because that's the only way to do it. I'm not going to sit there and fucking type out a transcript sober with no music, dude. I throw on a Tycho album. I put on Vanilla Beats. I put on Watermelon Man. I fucking, I go crazy. So wait, you're, you're telling me that editing for YouTube videos isn't fun and actually a lot of it is tedious and awful? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be Full surprised. What a fucking guest. Because, you know, it's apparently, so oh. according to most people who follow YouTube channels, it's like the greatest thing on earth. Oh man, you get to edit your own content. You must love it. It's the greatest experience ever. People don't realize how fucking long it takes sometimes, and just how tedious it gets. I'm, I'm glad you're the solution. I, I, I burn weed to avoid burnout, and I think it works out pretty well. I'm cl- well what I hate about that. editing is that while you're doing it, you can't engage in anything else. Yeah, meaning that mm-hmm. if well, you know, if when you're doing uh, your taxes or something, you can at least put on some music in the back. But if you're editing a podcast, you yeah. gotta listen. You you can't have music yeah. blaring yeah. because you gotta, you know, notice if there is noise or some sort of a static or anything. That's not to say oh, yeah. that our podcast I mean, is specifically our podcast is good at it or anything. But I'm talking in general here, that that's a big thing with <laughs> ours. Like when I'm editing it, I I think sometimes on bonus episodes because I edit the majority of those. We we record an episode and I just think, great, I can't wait to have to listen to the this again yeah. from start to finish. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, my workflow actually works well with music. Uh, with subtitles, I'll put on a just like an instrumental, 
album, so it's just music and no vocals, no talking, and I'll put it down really low, just so that it's just in the background. So you can feel the and vibrations. <laughs> yeah, enough enough to like soothe me, so that I can mm. do the subtitles. But when I motion track subtitles like above a video game character or on screen or whatever i i it's free reign i can i can listen to hell's kitchen season 10 and get angry when clemenza gets voted off spoiler alert mm. really pissed me off that that fucking episode dude i got so into kitchen nightmare season 10 with my friends this summer crazy I've no clue what that is it's gordon, gordon ramsay's, ramsay's gordon show ramsay. number 56 yeah gordon it's gordon, gordon ramsay, ramsay. Ramsay's my dude used to get angry at people yeah. i don't care about who that is oh we know so tom funny Papa. he makes oh, bread yeah. i have no idea who tom <gasps> Papa is wow and you listen to the podcast you fucking you liar swine. yeah who's tom Papa? Oh, god one of our best friends we trust the you world. he's yeah. a comedian yeah, he, he doesn't ever nice. swear and he makes bread he li- that's his hobby. He likes that's making it. bread. Sick. He lives a sick. life of making bread and not swearing. <laughs> Next, he'll be selling like Bibles and praying. <laughs> <laughs> tai Chi on a beach somewhere. He was sternly shaking his head watching that Elon Musk interview. <laughs> <laughs> Tapping his finger like he's, an angry mother. He's the type where as soon as he sees it, he just goes, Oh, Elon. <sighs> Joe, you know you. he's not old enough for that. <laughs> Listen, Elon, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he is a sweet right. Yeah. He was, actually, oh, yeah. Tom is the sort of person that would offer his couch to Elon after that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He took a hard rip. He must be really high. Yeah. You're please, underselling. Please go to sleep on my couch. Elon would show up and he'd go, please, take my bed. It's it's all, all the least I can do. <laughs> I mean, I'll sleep on the couch. See, you're joking, but that's <laughs> almost exactly what Joe Rogan did. It was a two and a half hour dick sucking session where Joe mm-hmm. was showing him his sword, like a little child. Like, yeah, I have it right here. Here, I can show you. That's my toy. My mom bought for me. Wait, he, <laughs> brought a a sword a, he brought a fucking sword to a podcast. Are you kidding? I, I kind of like the uh, the two hour dialogue because I got to learn more about like what the fuck that whole Neuralink shit was about. That like one company that Elon's part of, where like they put a brain net over your brain through uh, invasive <laughs> surgery, and then it's it's an AI like extension of yourself. No, I like which kind of tripped me out. It's just that like ninety percent of what he talked about, he's never gonna do because that's just who Elon Musk is. He promises and doesn't deliver on half of the shit, but. You can talk about all of that, and you're not going to bring up his comments about the cave diver dude that he just called a child oh, rapist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to bring up any criticism. You're just going to suck his dick for two hours. Look, I he like He was Joe. absolutely I, told not to. He was absolutely yeah, told not to do that definitely. before. Yeah, yeah. And, just, and, and risk risk his guests walking out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of the podcast? Fuck that. Yeah, still, you know, I'm just a little. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Call back. I mean, the whole thing was obviously he's not going to ruin it with any actual hard hitting questions. The whole point was listen to my podcast. I have Elon Musk on. Who fucking cares what we talk about? You know. Yeah. I mean, overall though, I still think it was a pretty entertaining episode. I thought it was. Oh, I it was, yeah. I thought it was cool. Oh, I do. I, I am excited for the next man Joe Rogan has on because it seems like no one's out of the realm of possibility. He'll probably fucking revive Michael Jackson for an episode. Now, you know, you know what would I think would actually happen and we're not that far away? Donald Trump. Probably. Yeah. Mm, maybe maybe he'll find Hitler hiding out in Argentina. Yeah, th- <laughs> there's really nothing that's out of the realm of possibility for Rogan. <laughs> I wonder if Tom Popper would offer his cash to Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he could get Brendan Fraser. I don't I like ooh, Brendan too. Fraser. Oh my god, fuck my shit up. I love that, man. Oh, I feel I feel so bad for that guy. He was so good in the mummy and then he got divorced. Yikes! He's that's what he's happens. He's on the come up again, though. But we we've been is he really? Yeah, he's got a couple Thanks projects. He's got TV oh, shows. <laughs> um. All right. Well, Brendan Fraser, if you're listening, maybe you can star on the podcast. Oh, uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's not happening. No, it's not happening. We've uh, contacted his agent, who told us no. We've contacted. Yeah. <laughs> Are you yeah, we contacted Brendan Fraser's oh friend who said no for Brendan, and then Brendan Fraser's friend's agent who said no for Brendan Fraser as well. Yeah. What Every, about Brendan Fraser himself? Well, there, you can't talk to Brendan Fraser himself. He's literally un, uncontactable. 
He's a ghost. So untraceable. Yeah, he's all, he's like off the grid, like a Jason Bourne type figure. <laughs> I feel like that's imposed onto him by his managers, though, because once he you do put an interviewer in front of him, he kind of just overshares. Like the one interview yeah. he agreed to, the lady comes to his house and immediately the first thing he talks about is like, is how he was molested. I would like some tea. Mm. Somebody oh. touch my balls. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, all right. I think it's just because let's, uh, let's move off of Brendan Fraser. Let's, I think <laughs> get off that subject. I, I think he's just not used to it anymore, and he doesn't. You know, he wants to probably not. He just wants to talk about things, and on his mind was ball fiddling. I suppose. <laughs> I assume nothing wrong with a little bit of testicular play every once in a while, apart from when it's forced on you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel real sorry um, for Brendan Fraser. I'm happy he's making a comeback. Me there. too, man. If anyone deserves it, it's him. And if anyone deserves nothing but misery, it's his ex-wife, Afton. Agreed. God, she's horrible. But if anyone deserves happiness out there, it's the owners of Loot Crates. <laughs> because they <laughs> are filled with wondrous treats, toys, gadgets, gizmos, collectibles, apparel, gear, Charlie, you literally were given a nice little loot crate. What was that mm-hmm. cool thing in it that you enjoyed and said, man, I love this thing now? A Courage the Cowardly Dog Pin. That's right. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's sick. But the loot It's like tailored for you. I, I know. I was it's about great. to say, it's, like it's almost like they custom made it just for me. It's a great idea. But uh, the, the loot crate features tons of different little collectibles, trinkets, things that you can get. This September crate has four incredible franchises, including... Marvel's Venom, Alien, Predator, and the X-Files. Loot Crate is $50 of value in a side of a crate for less than $20 a month. You literally cannot lose. They're going to sell out of these crates. They're going to run out. They're limited. They're exclusive and amazing. You only have until... Jackson? Wednesday, September 19th, Andrew, at 6 p.m. To guarantee your order of this crate, or it may be gone forever. You can get the best surprises <gasps> each month from the largest geek and gaming subscription company, Geek Out in Style, with Loot Crate. Uh, Mr. Swagger Souls, if you could tell them the promotional code, that'd be great. Official! Je- Jesus, he was right. <laughs> I can't believe it. Subscribe now by going to lootcrate.com slash official and enter the code official to save an exclusive 15% off your subscription. There's a little subtext here that says I have to repeat myself. So subscribe now by going to lootcrate.com slash official, enter the code official, and you can save 15% off of your Loot Crate subscription. Whoa, man. 15%? Literally. Holy shit. Uh, you boys brought this up to me, and I didn't know about this. Speaking of cool shit, uh, it's something that really kind of... Bummed me out is the Spider-Man marriage proposal rejection. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm, so, I'm so glad yeah. we're talking about this. Oh, I, I didn't read into this. Someone explain all of this to me. I didn't look at it. What a I saw your message man. in the chat, but I didn't oh, look. Man. It is so sad. It oh, is it I is can, on another I level. I take the helm on this one. So yeah. a, little, a little man, a little gamer boy was on Twitter <laughs> fumbling around. And he was like, oh, I love my dear sweet girlfriend so much. My, the, oh. This Maddie woman is the love of my life. Insomniac Games, I hear that you're making Spider-Man game, and I love Spider-Man, and it looks great. Could you do me a favor? Just please, you know, just maybe put an Easter egg or something in the game or about Spider-Man where it just says a marriage proposal. That, that'd be great. I'd appreciate it. And Insomniac Games was like, we'll take the high road on this. Sure. Who, and I think literally their official tweet was like, who are we to say no to true love or something like that? So in the new Spider-Man game is a movie theater that you can walk by as Spider-Man in the middle of the city. And the name of the movie playing is, will you marry me, Maddie? And apparently a couple days after the game came out, the guy made a video, the guy who reached out to Insomniac made a video on YouTube discussing how not only had they broken up weeks before the game came out, but she (laughs) left him for his brother. (laughs) Oh, that's dog. Yeah. That's dog of the so day. So I'm waiting for the uh, inevitable mandatory update of like a couple Megs coming out for Spider-Man to change that to something else. Oh, like fuck you, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Oh, that's pretty sad. <laughs> that's sad, dude. That that is fuck. If you watch that the video, really he bad. still has fan, you know, memorabilia of 
Spider-Man <laughs> hanging on his walls. He still yeah. has posters, and I don't know how he can look at it without being immediately reminded of his ex-girlfriend just swallowing and digesting his brother's cum. Day in and day out. <laughs> Fucking hell. Just maybe, like, maybe, we maybe she broke hands. up. No, no, this is important. Like as he was being a little boy on Twitter, going, "Yeah, please put my marriage proposal in your video games." His brother was pile driving his girlfriend behind his back. <laughs> That's very, very, very on, possible. <laughs> what? Come on, dude. What if the reason she broke up with him was because he was way too into Spider-Man and it freaked her out? Well, she probably caught wind of the marriage proposal and thought it was the dumbest shit she'd ever seen, so she went to his chat-ass brother who wouldn't propose via video game. What if, well, like, she's... Yeah, or maybe maybe she went to his brother because he likes Batman and Batman's <laughs> cool. Do you think that, like, while her bro his brother was cream-pieing her, like, literally mid-climax, <laughs> she's just like, oh, 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 get this, Darren, get this. He's gonna propose to me in a Spider-Man game. <laughs> <laughs> let's laugh at him. He calls her. Let's he calls let's her laugh. like, Maddie, Maddie, next week, you know, the game's coming out. You should come over and we can play together. I have a surprise for you. And she's like, yeah... I love you too, honey, as she's sucking his brother's cock. Let, let, let's taking laugh at breaths. him. Ha, ha, ha. Don't, don't shift too hard, though. I don't want to stain my sheets, but let's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. It's a gamble to begin with, even if she didn't cheat on him with her own blood. Because what if the game was absolute ass? Not what just you know, that. Why make what? anything like that so public? Yeah. I don't know why yeah, people make marriage you. proposals so, so public when there's the chance that it could all go wrong. Yeah. I don't want my biggest moment being a spotlight for misery. Yeah. The dickheads who yeah. propose at like football matches, football games. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. come on, dude. Like, you're let me just put a big spotlight on my girlfriend so that she can't say no. Yeah, exactly. And then if she does say no, then I'm fucked. The, the, the problem <laughs> if she is does that say no, you're fucked, and she's an asshole. The problem yeah, is people don't weigh, they don't weigh the the pros and cons of it. Like the the pro is if you do this big elaborate marriage proposal in front of these thousands of people, if it works. For the next five minutes, people are like, hey, good job. And then no one gives any form of a shit that you did it. If it doesn't work, you are the laughing stock of that event for years to come. Speaking of which, um, I did get a message the other day that uh, because shout outs were out, he wanted me to read this. It's to his girlfriend. Um, so this, this one's from Gare Bear. A long distance relationship was always said to be hard. 800 miles away was a distance, but we've made it to work for over two years now. This is my thank you, Madison. And I love you to forget forever Madison and beyond. It, yeah, ironic. <laughs> thank I you boys for guy. being able to give us something to relate to every week. It really means a lot from Garrett. There you go. Garrett. All right, Garrett. That's also awesome. talk to your brother real quick. And yeah, let's yeah. go make sure. Yeah. Make sure he's yeah. okay. I don't know oh. if I could if I could do an 800 mile long long distance relationship unless I had an 800 mile long dick, then maybe you don't. Mm. But I don't. Oh, no, pussy. not 800 miles long. I'm not sure. Oh. Have you guys actually measured your penis? Have you actually gotten a ruler into the shower? <laughs> yeah. Why do you need to be in the Why do you need to be in the shower to do it? Fair enough. Actually, yeah, we could literally, I'll do it right now. Well, yeah, yeah, Andrew, I, I want to hear. I, I want to hear you unzip. Do it. I'm wearing pajama pants. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't. I <laughs> can't give you that unzip. noise. I can give you an unbutton. <laughs> <laughs> I won't settle for an unbutton. Because <laughs> I don't think I've. I don't think I've actually measured my penis until like last year. No, no, six months ago, something like that. Um, and the only reason I did it is because I had this tape measure in my room. <laughs> And I just, you know, I was, I was done jacking off and my fucking, you know, underwear around my ankles. And I looked at the tape measure and I was like, hmm, I wonder how big my dick actually is. Because I've only oh, yeah. ever compared it to like my iPhone 5S. So I got to give it a try. <laughs> no, the And I measured it. So go ahead. Huh? No, no, after you. I was going to say, like, you can't be a guy in the same room with a tape measure and not think about doing it. Even if you've done it of countless course. times, you just every single time, you know that feeling when you're hungry and you grown. keep opening the fridge and there's nothing in the fridge, but you'd still keep rechecking the fucking fridge every five minutes as though yeah, Santa hoping. was going to restock it. That's how you feel <laughs> with the tape measure sometimes. It's just, oh, that one extra 
little millimeter maybe you know maybe today I'm maybe i didn't more. press it into the base <laughs> yeah. hard enough maybe i didn't it's stretch like, it's it like hard enough you, it's oh. like when you go to your grandma's house and then she puts you up against the wall and, and does that thing with the pencil over your head yeah. to track oh, your height oh i'm so yeah. glad yeah. That you said that i thought you were gonna say puts you against the wall and starts measuring your no. dick Ooh. <laughs> no no oh that'd be kicky though the wall. maybe <laughs> yucky nana <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but the best part about using a tape measure is that not only do you get length, but you get girth. That's the worst part mm-hmm. for me. Oh, yeah? yeah the girth is Dolly the has a water. pencil dick. Oh, yeah, I hate, really? I hate the girth so. measurements. I wish I wish tape measures never came in like this malleable form where you could wrap it around. <laughs> I wish it was just straight. All right. That doesn't make your dick larger, though. Yeah, but then that I doesn't wouldn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Why wouldn't you just wish for a thicker dick? You just, you know, you're just fucking making carpenters miserable <laughs> at that point. At least then I'd be able to live yeah. in ignorant bliss. Like, well, maybe it's you know, maybe it's huge. Maybe it's big girth. I don't know. I don't know the numbers. I can't crunch the, the algorithms. <laughs> I mean, even without a tape measure, you could measure your girth by wrapping a string around it and then measuring the string. I That's don't true, hear but this. Ooh, no. true. No, no one wants to. No one wants to do like the old like caveman sundial methods. <laughs> no one's gonna go back to the old ways. Yeah. The fucking lever and pulley yeah. system. That's how the That's how the Amish do it. Kai has been practicing on how to measure his dick in prison. He needs oh, to yeah? measure it everywhere. <laughs> There's I nowhere asked, he I can't just asked measure. The female prison guards. The interesting thing. The interesting thing about the dick measuring is that. I wasn't erect for it, and so I was like, "Oh well, maybe I'll just I'll just measure it flaccid, pull uh, pot, uh, and see what I got." No, you yeah, can't. It was do very that. weird. I like yeah. I never noticed how elastic a penis was until I tried. Oh, man, no, penises, penises are, are fucking that is marvels. The professional tactic. That's how the professionals you ever wrap measure your a penis. dick around your finger. No, Ooh, you, Jesus, okay, not that. No, but it's sick. When you, yeah, it's like a ring. It's like a custom ring. I, I mean, it's pretty the, sick how malleable it is. The fucking penis is a goddamn, like, it's like silly putty sometimes. You ever watch those uh, African tribesmen where they literally, like, twirl it around a stick, and then they put the stick between <laughs> their legs and put it behind their butt cheeks and walk around? It's called <laughs> you know the reason they bigot. do that, right? You know the reason they do that? No, I don't. mosquitoes away. To make it longer you know, for so, women? Like, no, no, so your dick doesn't get caught on thorny bushes or chewed by a black mamba. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but the penis kind of dangles, dangles around, and when you're walking in the bush, that's it's not good to get that caught on something. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's the reason they do it. I don't know how primordial men ran without underwear. Oh, I don't either. Sometimes, like a uh, occasionally, I, like <laughs> occasionally, I, like fucking Tommy pickles it around my house and just run around <laughs> naked, <laughs> and it hurts so bad, like my ball sacks hitting my my, yeah. my pelvis. Oh, I yeah. fucking, uh, shaft is I used to, uh, everywhere. Charlie, I used to, uh, sometimes when I was bored, I would play DDR naked. And let, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, let me tell you, I've never seen a, a more uncomfortable symphony of slapping meat because I had to stop very quickly. <laughs> it doesn't work. You know, you know how there's those certain milestones in the evolution of man that have just catapulted us forward, like uh, discovering fire, starting to eat meat, which, you know, gave us more calories. Exactly, brain development. And I feel like the invention of underwear was one of those things. If you went back in time, Mm -hmm. gave a caveman underwear, and all of a sudden he's able to comfortably run and climb, I think we would be colonizing Mars right now. Would have made a huge difference. It's such an un- we, would have just, we would have just skipped the Dark Ages. It's such an unsung hero of the human race, too, though. Like, no one even knows who first invented the underwear. Like, who first cupped the balls with cloth? Hang on. Let me, I can Google this. This is the 21st century. It was Elon Musk. It's, yeah, pretty sure it's Musk. You're, Elon Musk. You're probably going to get mixed stuff of like, oh, we found traces of underwear in China, but also in Egypt, and uh, who knows? Apparently, it was Elizabeth Miller invented loose trousers to be worn by women oh. uh, in like 1849. What? So, okay, no, yeah, apparently, underwear is for women you. before That's 1849. Not, yeah, bullshit. Even if it wasn't officially well, called underwear, I guarantee you people still wore some kind of shit like it. Of course, I mean, men wore, like, that, that fucking, like, weird chap shit with, like, the detachable cup, so that way you, you can, like, copulate with your female with the consent of the king, you know? Okay, that's not what I'm talking I'll make a guess here, and somebody in the comments educate us. I'll say that the first underwear was invented when we hit the... You know when cavemen just hunted something, ripped the leather off the animal, and put it around his cock? 
True. Like, it's like, gonna work. His ass, like, like oh, little, this keeps like me warm. Like a little dick slave. Yeah, like do you think slave. he was trying to, like, fuck it? And then he went, actually, I could just leave this on. I think, oh, think he's not trying to stay warm. It was oh. probably, that was the first condom. <laughs> Maybe evolution favored men with small penises at first, because Ooh. it wouldn't get caught on, well, actu- on shit. Actually, and, uh, and they'd be able to run no, faster. Evolution, mm. I don't know about that, but society did for a very long time. Uh, yeah. That's why uh, Michelangelo's David has a tiny, tiny wiener, because people thought it was more... Uh, it, yeah, uh, the, like the Romans, the Romans thought it was... Yeah. L- Equal to power, like yeah. the smallest dick in the room was the most powerful man. God, why can't we go back to those times? They said powerful, <laughs> yeah, I'd be they a said. fucking god. <laughs> I'd be a king. <laughs> Jesus, I'd be a fucking lowly peasant. <laughs> fucking elephant yeah, dicks walking too. around. I would fucking, <laughs> and fucking suck. I can't oh. wait to drink hemlock for crimes against <laughs> the gods. He's having a- too big of a cock. <laughs> What a fucking society that would be. You have like all of these elephant trunk penises dragging on the ground and then like the smallest micro dick in the world atop a throne of women. Can you imagine the, the society that reverses <laughs> ours where like Chad Thundercock is looked at like a loser and a fucking w- dumbass and the flabby out of shape tiny dick <laughs> men are just running around getting all the women. It's like oh, a yeah. comic book. It's like it, it's that like, should be a comic book. It's a book. comic book fan's fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you just describe the fat acceptance movement, where like all the hot women are these, you know, they've just been conditioned by society to look hot, and all the fat oh, women are the like, real queens. Yeah, I feel like we're living an opposite day every day at this point. Mm-hmm. Nothing makes any sense. Yeah, we're just missing the small penises equaling power. One day, one day. <laughs> I'll keep stroking my penis, telling it one day it's time to shine. One day, one day we'll evolve so hard they'll get so big it's just literally does not fit in the vagina, and then they'll be saying we want smaller dicks, and that's when I'll stand up and shine, and I'll whisper to them, "No, (laughs) you had your chance." I hope that's one day the the only problem humanity has left. We still have to solve like global warming. Everybody's vaccinated. We no longer have super bugs. Everybody's happy, fed, no hunger. But oh god, just the, the ladies, they just can't handle our cocks. How do we solve this global what a crisis? Problem to ha- what a problem to have. The scientists yeah. in like the top facilities are like, what if we made the vaginas bigger? What if we made them deeper? <laughs> yeah, then, then all the tight women would be out. They'd be out. And then there's me. Everyone would be looking for loose scoops. And then I'm in the background of the meeting and I stand up, I have the solution. <laughs> <laughs> drop trousers. They all start clapping. <laughs> My God, what is that? <laughs> you get the they Nobel Prize. Dicks, they start putting your dicks on PowerPoint presentations, and they present it in the Pentagon. It, the patient zero of small penis. <laughs> they don't believe it. <laughs> wow. Alex Char- Jones says it's photoshopped. <laughs> Can't be that oh my small. God. Charlie, you would literally institutionalize cuckoldry because you'd, you'd walk up to everyone and go, can't fuck your wife? I'll fuck your wife. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh, fuck. I just dropped my microphone. and uh, are, you, are you holding it? it? No, it, it fell off oh, my I mic stand. Holding it oh, like a God, cave it looks like a, I'm fucking, I'm holding it now. It looks like I have no choice. <laughs> I'm holding it for the rest of the podcast. Well, there's something I can't. There's something I can't hold in for this whole podcast, and it's how much I love Mint Mobile. (laughs) There's a big problem in the big wireless providers. AT&T has a new $800 million administrative fee increase, and they don't want you to know that you can cut your wireless bill down to $15 a month with Mint Mobile. There is a game-changing company out there that's taken everything wrong with wireless and making it right, and it is known as Mint Mobile, the cell phone plan that lets you choose your gigabyte data package, use your existing phone number and phone. Every plan comes with unlimited talks and texts. If you're not 100% satisfied, you can send back seven-day money-back guarantee, and you can ditch your old wireless bill and start saving. It's a whole, whole little PowerPoint presentation of bullet points of reasons that you should do it. So I don't think there's a reason not to do it. So since literally everyone listening right now is going to go sign up for Mint Mobile, I'm going to have Kaya read the copy. It's mintmobile.com slash official. So for just 15 bucks a month, that's like, what, two Starbucks coffees at this point? So you can mm-hmm. just go to mintmobile.com slash official and get connected. Free shipping mint. on your mobile SIM card if you use our offer. Yeah, Mint! Are you, are you leaving? <laughs> oh no, I was I was lighting a candle. Oh, oh even better. Setting oh, the mood to the mood yeah. for the next measuring session. 
Why are you lighting a candle? So it smells good, oh. dummy. Oh, uh, are you one of those people? Mm, incense. Well, my, it's, either, it's okay. It's either it's either my room smells like weed or it smells like black chocolate truffle. I, oh, fair I so. prefer the latter. That sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Same. I love chocolate and I love coffee smells to the point where I've made my own coffee candles. It's such a good smell. Jesus Christ, you're like an, you're like that uh, primitive technology guy. You like make all your own <laughs> shit. Dude, I fucking love that channel, man. Yeah, he's it's great, great channel. Man. It's great. Yeah, he, he lives in like far north Queensland. Some I think shit primitive in, uh, in Australia. Probably the oh. only channel I've seen on YouTube trending that I really, really liked. He's great. Because he doesn't room. fucking talk. Because <laughs> he's, Every- he's not like, what's up, guys? It's your boy, primitive technology, back at it again in the jungle. We're going to be making a hut. It's going to be sick. And then, you know, he does yeah. his free gift card giveaway or yeah. some shit. It's joined just, today by it's just, JoJo, who's going to help me make this pot. <laughs> I have a wacky oh, primitive technology challenge. We're going to play, be playing Hopscotch. Whoa! Because, you know, adults <laughs> play kids <laughs> games. is so fucking wacky and hilarious and worth 10 minutes of content. Yeah, no. Don't rub sticks together at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like I, made a, I made a mud hut out of mud. You won't believe what happens next. Speaking I sit in it. Swagger, since you have a candle, have you ever dripped candle wax on your dick or balls? Not on my dick or balls. What I have done, though, is taken my finger and put it in hot wax and then dealt with the pain and then done it again and again until I have, like, this giant candle on my finger. And then I peel it off like a shell. Okay, do it with your balls, but shave first. <laughs> just, just do it with my balls and my dick and just get a perfect mold of my dick <laughs> out of wax. I think I is getting wick, off at the put, moment. Put a, Put put a wick in the urethra, light it. No, 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 not that hard. <laughs> Take a candle, drip a little bit of wax onto a table, and then just dunk your balls on top of it and jack off. Have you done that, Kaya? Yes. What? For Why? some reason, that sounds uncomfortable. That sounds awful. It, it is, sounds is terrible. illegal in Turkey? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that's very elaborate. Well, what made you think of, all, of doing yes, that? Yes, it is. Second of all, you're missing like, out. I have to prepare a fucking table, and then I have to light a candle, <laughs> wait for the candle wax to melt. You're not preparing As you don't have to build the somebody. table. Yeah, it sa- sounds like I'm fucking doing a doing some kind of ritual here. No, no. Just just uh, just to get myself off. I prefer to just sit down at my computer chair where I do all my editing and podcast talking, and then I uh, just pull up pull up a picture of some titties and <laughs> go at it. Uh, you gotta make it special. Mm. Hiya, what is this this <laughs> fucking like summoning of the devil you're talking about here? What are you what are you doing? No, I'm saying it's not like that. He's communing with his ancestors. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, it's a Turkish tradition. <laughs> it's like the Dia de los Muertos of, of Turkey. <laughs> Hot balls day. It, are the cops coming for you? That's <laughs> no, Tetra misses Tiana. She's out right now. Oh. I'm sorry. Is it a dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He tried Tetra. the hot wax trick. <laughs> he, just, he just tried it. Oh my god. It hurts. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. Is she really locked in your room? Yep. No, she's not. She just came into my room. I, I let her roam she when she came into wine here. and leave. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yeah. look to remind if me. She keeps whining. If she keeps whining, just give her some chocolate. It'll calm her down. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. Oh, one thing I learned though, and I didn't know this. Did you guys know grapes are extremely poisonous to dogs? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Am I the only one that didn't know that? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. You let your dog eat anything, including your ass cream. <laughs> well, no, I don't. Like ass cream. I, I say. You, people know this? Have you told people yet, Charlie? Well, have I, t- I don't let her eat shit. Tiana's the one that gives her everything, but yeah, yeah she stole is, She stole okay, my preparation meat once. You and I were playing once. a game in your room. I walked out of your room, and on the floor, I see Tetra chewing on your hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> yeah. And then you having <laughs> oh to explain God. the situation to Tiana, because apparently it's super toxic. Well, no. In, she, it, it, I would uh, think so. It, I would it think turns, the cream no. meant for hemorrhoids is toxic. No, it's only toxic to humans. As it turns out, it's ma- it's basically a delicacy to animals. Oh yeah, it's, it's made really. for animals. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. You were using animal hemorrhoid cream instead. <laughs> yeah. have, you, have you ever seen the? You saw the video. I think it was Vitaly Z TV or whatever. That fucking Russian guy that does steroids and did like fucking prank compilations uh, on YouTube. He like does yeah. steroids thing. as a prank. Yeah. <laughs> no, he he, do, he does it because he's insecure about his body, but that's besides the point. That sounds like uh, a prank to me. He did this thing on Twitter where there was like this monkey in a in a diaper. It was like a chimp, and they were fucking smoking. Uh, uh, they were doing dabs, and the monkey did a dab with them. Like it put its mouth on the mouthpiece and ripped this dab and got super baked. And then uh, you could just see like 
I think it must have been like 20 minutes later, it cut to like the monkey like falling asleep, like pretty much sitting up. And then they were like, they, they nudged him with a blunt and was like, hey, you want to hit the blunt, dude? You want to hit the blunt? And the monkey just looked at it and just kind of shook his head and, and just closed his eyes. I think I, I, like, think I did see that. You know, a lot of people had a problem with that, but, but I really don't see the problem. I really don't see there being a problem with it. It's a monkey. The monkey wants to, to to hit a dab or get high, then let the monkey do what the monkey wants. Hmm. I guess that's fair enough. It ties back to an argument that we've talked about many times between Kai and, my, Kai and myself. Can animals used for sexual purposes consent, such as sardines? What the that's fuck? Little- no. Okay, well, Jesus, you're going to get at both of us shit for no reason. That was a entirely different argument. None of us think you should use animals <laughs> why do you, for sex. Why do you two want to... Fuck sardines. Jesus, that's the most horrible Why way sardines? to phrase it. Why would I want my dick to smell like fish? Why? It already oh does that. Why when you, you, when you, you, guys are not, you guys are knocking the animal kingdom when they have some of the most intricate pussies the world has ever seen. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, all right. Andrew's digging his own hole. <laughs> have you not looked up animal pussy and how variety it is? <laughs> A fucking no. dolphin. Yeah, I'll just, if I, if I'll just I might Google animal, one, animal, animal pussy. I might be the one to inform you. A dolphin pussy can jack you off as you fuck it. Oh my god! I just okay. Don't Google animal <laughs> pussy because <laughs> the, the first, the first, the first fucking result was, dude, fucking animal pussy like it's not a big deal. <laughs> That's Andrew. That's just Andrew. Andrew in a cowboy oh hat and god. twirling his shirt over his head. Take Jesus that, Christ! I'm. Time to delete my browsing history. No, time Nate. to clarify. So, like, five years ago, Charlie and I, were, we talked about this before on the podcast, yeah. but it was, like, episode Yeah, the Saturdays, I remember that. But I, we were playing League of Legends or something, and I sent Charlie a link to one of those shock sites, like one of those, ha-ha, isn't this a funny video? You know, and one of those videos was a woman had a funnel in her ass, and they were funneling little sardines into her ass, like life oh, I've sardines. I've seen that once. Oh, oh, it, were they alive? That's a classic. And, yeah, they were that. alive. They were squirming around, and she was, was shooting she them out of her oh. ass. And I showed this to Charlie, and Charlie goes, Jesus, like, ew, was it consensual? And I said, <laughs> no. I said, no, they're sardines. They can't consent. Oh, and he goes, no, I'm just talking about the woman, you dumbass. Did she consent? And I said, what the well, fuck she's laying talking? there with a funnel in her ass, yeah. and then she's letting her poor sardines in her ass. Of course, she was consenting. Sure she it's consents. not a rape video that I found on the deep web. Yeah, she was consenting, yeah, and that's the argument. That's it. We're t- we were talking yeah, but about. But I can, I can see, I can see Charlie's point of view though, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. who in their right mind would want sardines in their ass? Exactly. So Japanese obviously, women. you'd be like, oh. <laughs> oh, oh she you, was a yeah, Japanese you didn't woman. Specify. Now it makes perfect okay. sense. Now that, that's fine. You don't even have to. Yeah, Charlie is was wrong that, in that instance. Is, nice. is, is this that same <laughs> website where we talked about it, it, where all the women like fuck bugs and put centipedes that's in their vagina? And shit. No, 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 stop, stop it. That's that the one great. I showed you. That was yeah, that's a different one. I this, is, the name yeah. it now. this is the generic porn site, Andrew. The yeah, one yeah, with yeah, two girls, one cup, oh. one guy, one jar, I think it was called, where the jar breaks in his ass oh, and he yeah. makes all the shards. Yeah. That's, oh, no, that is a name. It's not one guy, one Ah, oh, fuck. I know what you're talking about. I'm sure one guy, one jar. I'm yeah. sure it's like Doesn't jar matter. guy. And he has the most nonchalant yeah. reaction in the world. When it shatters, he just goes like, oh. Not again. Oh, shit. Oh, looks like this just... Looks like there's just fucking liters of blood leaking out of my anus now. Cool. Yeah, maybe I could sleep this Typical off. Thursday. Yeah. Have you ever seen the video the the fucking dog that found like magic mushrooms in the backyard and ate it, and the dog was just tripping balls? Yeah. Its fucking pupils are huge. It's panting and looking you have around. An extensive like it's having knowledge a framework fucking... of animals getting high. Yeah. <laughs> no, you go on that side of YouTube. It's it's so fun. It's so fun. Yeah. But. The, the the description read that this lady ended up taking the dog to the vet, and the vet said, "Oh yeah, uh, this happens more often than you'd think, <laughs> and and you have to watch your dog when he goes outside now because he's going to try to seek out the mushrooms and eat them again, because because he's he enjoyed it." And <laughs> I thought that was funny. I thought that was really funny that that even dogs know that magic mushrooms are tasty and. Good for your brain. See, that, that would make me feel better about the monkey video where if they came back the next day and offered offered him the dab and you could see whether or not he wanted it. Yeah, he just gets really excited, like, yeah, fuck yeah. 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 Guys are back. 
Animals absolutely get addicted to shit. They're just mm, animals, yeah. as are there's, we. It's not a surprise. A whole, uh, I mean, there's a whole collective of monkeys, I think, in Thailand that just chain smoke in the city. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like there's there's those old monkey commercials in the like the cars. Do they actually just walk around they, they smoking doobs? They did a fucking Planet Earth on them. I think it's I think it's mm. Thailand, but literally, there's like a city so where weird. there's just monkeys living in it. And uh, they, they at one Ugh. point they don't focus on in the planet Earth, but I've seen it. They just sit around and fucking chain smoke cigarettes from people who give it I to. I don't them. care what the clan Hello. told you. They're people, Andrew. Yeah, it's like a really, it's like a really boring, boring version of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Andrew's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> right. It's a, it's a, they, they rule the world. They take over and they just, they just smoke all the cigarettes, and that's it. They, they don't enslave the humans. They just want the the cigarettes. And they leave. <laughs> Yeah, you just go back to the jungle. Wow, well, yeah, this is all the, actually, all the bugs. You'd be surprised how many different results I got for chain smoking monkeys. Like apparently, <laughs> apparently, like chimpanzees in particular are extremely susceptible to getting addicted to beer and smoking. <laughs> no shit. As am I. Holy uh, shit! They're just like us. And yeah. one of the top ones is meet North Korea's chain smoking chimp. <laughs> Their only tourist attraction. It looks like it, yeah, it looks like the fucking album cover to like a Nirvana album in the nineties. Oh. He's just, he's got a he's got a cigarette and he's about to light it up. Yeah, <laughs> That's great. The name of that the name of the monkey is Kim Jong Un. Oh, Ooh, take that! You Kim. nailed him. You got him. Uh, first person to ever me, say bitch, you won't. First person to say something bad about him ever. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, is it possible to get addicted to sleeping, though? Oh, I think it is, Andrew, but only if you have the proper mattress, which is the Lisa mattress. Tell them about it, Andrew. Oh, the Lisa mattress is one of the finest mattresses I've ever used, <laughs> and one of the finest mattresses all of us have ever used. Even Swagger uh-huh. Souls, who we've never spoken to before this podcast, probably loves, has fallen asleep because he's, he's sleeping right now. podcasting live from his Lisa mattress. That's right. Lisa! Huh? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear you. This Lisa mattress is so comfortable. <laughs> Over three three hundred thousand happy Lisa sleepers agree, and all five of us are part of that number. Lisa's mattress gives them the rest they need. If you want to try the best mattress on earth that we legitimately all love, comprised of three foam layers that give you cooling pressure, body contouring, and support, and a screaming dog. You can order your Lisa mattress online at lisa.com slash official to try it risk-free for a hundred nights. Find the mattress you need to get the rest that you need at lisa.com slash official. So don't miss the big Lisa sale up to $235 off and free shipping on any Lisa mattress at lisa.com slash official. That's L E E S A dot com slash official. Swagger Souls. Oh yeah. We've been we've been hinting at it. We've been scraping the scraping the surface here, scratching the skin. I think we need to stop dancing around this fucking issue because I think you're gonna wow us on this one. Do you have any good masturbation stories? Masturbating. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I know. See, uh, you were prepared. I knew it. Ah <sighs> uh, shit. Let me think. All right. I mean, you're a man who went to well, great lengths to measure his dick, and you can't come up with one on the yeah, spot. No, I mean, I'm just sorting through the catalog of, of the times I've masturbated, which would be every day <laughs> for about 10 years. Uh, Only once a day. I would show. Wait, how old are you? Yeah. 17? <laughs> he's, just, he's just getting warmed up. I've been masturbating since I was seven, obviously. Gotta start early. <laughs> yeah. Um, shit. Well, let me, let me think. Yeah. Uh, there was this one time I was jacking off. And I forgot to take my toilet paper uh, into my room because what I do usually is that when I jack off, I get a like like a strip of toilet paper and I'll fold it in half. And then what I'll do is when I'm about to you know pop the seal, I'll take the the toilet paper and put it on my dick like a paper condom, and then just jack mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. ejaculate into it. And then I uh, go to the bathroom, flush down the toilet, and bam, I'm set. But uh, on that occasion, I had I was I was so you know horny that I decided I would just watch a video and and just start jacking it without toilet paper, and I had only realized that when I was about to you know jizz, I did not have the toilet paper on hand, <gasps> and I didn't want to get it on my keyboard. I didn't want to get it on my monitors, my mouse, my chest, or my you know fucking anywhere that that wasn't sanitary. Um, so I had a 
a bottle of water that was empty. Oh. <laughs> and so, so I had this empty water bottle, and I'm like, oh, shit, I'll just grab this. And I put it over my dick. It wasn't empty. It was, uh, it was about halfway full, <laughs> and I got water all over my crotch, and, uh, and as well as, you know, you know how semen gets in fucking cold water? You know how that fucking, it just, it just immediately congeals? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like, like, like fucking oobleck slime you see being yeah. made on YouTube? Yeah, it's it was just, like it was extreme. a fucking mess. It's it like, it's a like a, sp- it's like Spider-Man's web, basically. <laughs> Because if, it it was it was crazy too. Because as soon as I felt the fucking cold water hit my knob, it was just like ah oh fuck, and it just it was a wild ride of euphoria and panic and fear and then regret and shame as I had to find a way to clean my carpet. So there's a masturbatory tale for you See, from uh, from the man himself. That euphoria and excitement is part of why candle wax and cold things are fun on your balls. And without yeah. the shame or cleanup because it's in a controlled environment. In Kai's lab. Yeah, in Kai's underground lab. You make like the fucking Dexter crime scenes. Like you just cover everything in saran wrap. Jesus, and start yeah, going just rip a little bit of candle wax on a table. And when you get done, you scrape it off. Don't yeah, be so where fucking do you, lazy. Where do you blow your load? Like, this is your table. You eat. Any, you don't have to blow your load on the table. You can blow your load into anything. It's just your balls. <laughs> oh, so you the well's your oyster, Andrew. <laughs> oh, so I see. You just, you dip your balls in the candle wax like a clown in a dunk tank, and then you move yeah, on. You, yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> you tea oh, back oh, the candle oh, wax. Oh, I thought you were like, okay. I thought you were like fucking the table. With yeah, a, with I thought, a, no, I thought you dropped yeah. your nuts on the table in the candle yeah. wax and just blew your load across. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I literally thought you like set up a base of operations and like planted your fucking knob and berries <laughs> on it. And... No, that would be, yeah. that'd be, oh my uh, God. I, I thought you were playing... I thought you were playing like asteroids on your table where you were like pretending to shoot them down as they came toward your <laughs> you dick. You do? Well, you got to do it. You got to get six red solo cups and put it at the opposite end of the table. So when you blow your load, if you get into one of the solo cups, you can like play a game of beer pong and get like six <laughs> friends. You, there's a porn out there with that premise where they're just jacking dudes off across a beer pong table. Look, I, I'm just saying candle wax is perfect because it's, I'll, it melts give it a at try the tonight. exact temperature that you want where it isn't scalding. It doesn't cause any damage on your skin, but it's hot enough. But I'm worried that because... You know, I use a I use an electric razor to manscape. Same. And the thing is with the electric razors, and it's very hard for me to get all of the little hairs on my nutsack. Mm-hmm. So if I dip the bottom of my nutsack on wax, that's going to oh. be like yeah. very painful to fucking peel off. Oh, yeah. You would have experience. Do you slowly peel it off, or is it like a fucking bandaid? Like no, you got to shave clean the balls. You got to shave clean, not the rest of your dick. Wait. Kai, are your balls completely clean shaven like a baby's taint? When I'm doing that, well, I mean, I'm not doing it that often, not, not like every day, but when you want to do this, when he decides it doesn't to tr- have to be clean shit. <laughs> when he decides to treat himself. <laughs> like <laughs> shave like himself. if I have a day off, just, ah, you know what, I'm, I have my groceries, I have got nothing to do today, I don't have to leave the house, <laughs> I'm going to treat myself. <laughs> At that point, you can just shave your balls. No, it doesn't have to be clean shaven if you just want to do this real quick. Does, no, as long as your ball hair isn't completely un ungroomed and just wiry yeah. ass hair on your balls, no, it's not a problem. It'll just come right off. Hmm. How did you discover this method? Was there like a like a Shaolin monk you found that trained it. you? <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Your girlfriend's into it. Does, was previous well, well this one too oh, but well, no what i mean what how does it work for, her, for though? play that's what i'm saying it's safe it's candle wax yes it burns a little but it doesn't actually cause any damage to the skin so you can just tie somebody up and drop candle wax on them all day long without causing any damage well i was gonna ask well, candle how, wax i think is cool i was gonna ask how she's into it do you like fill her pussy so you, then you don't have to use condoms cool. or like drip it on her oh but what so when did the teabagging of the yeah, table start? It seems like a big what leap. You do when you're alone, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, just, you, you, when, so you've, no, you gotta you pour hot wax on her face and then you and then you then you teabag. Easy. You leave her a little you imagine you, you, Anna you, put, you put the hot wax on her forehead and then you teabag it like a king's royal stamp. My dick was here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. It's not my fucking insignia. 
my ball wrinkles I don't put on letters. That should be. That should or, be my fucking signature. Yeah, just, be, yeah. just, you, you carry around like a, like a little cup of ink. That's what a little, a little mason yeah, jar some... of ink. And when you're at the fucking bank, you're like, oh, let me sign this check. You just whip, whip your fucking testicles <laughs> out of your fly, dunk it in, and just smack the check with it right in front of the teller. You can do that when you send private letters, I bet, with the red candle wax and then just stamp your balls on top of it. And if somebody asks what this is this monogram you can just tell oh, it's a map pressed. of the city i'm very proud of where i was born i'm not gonna know the difference it's just ridges to them yeah. you can just say oh, oh it's rivers <laughs> <laughs> gotta make sure your nutsack is pretty cold for that oh, God. all those ridges all those folds of skin yeah you can't have like a soft nutsack going into this kind no. of procedure i don't suppose is yours not always like super wrinkly no, it, for me, it depends. There'll be days where my nuts will just be like pretty long and low hanging and, and that's fine. They'll swing around and shit. Like I wear boxer briefs. I used to wear, I used to wear boxers and there was like, I must've been like 13 or 14. Uh, when I made the switch from boxers to boxer briefs, it was because my boxers were too loose and my fucking nuts were just slapping around. Mm-hmm. And because of that, um, I believe it's called a torsion. Oh my god! It's a oh, no. torsion Jesus. where your where your nuts wrap around each yep. other, and yep. there's like a window where you have to fucking like you know unwrap them or whatever. So like I had to I had to get that shit sorted, and then they were like, "Yeah, wear boxer briefs," and then I switched to boxer briefs. Never a testicular problem ever since. God, yeah, you convinced a- me. That's like the third yeah. person I've heard preach that to me. I, oh, I wear yeah. boxers as well. Um, yeah, but boxer briefs, like, like boxers were comfortable and everything, but dude, boxer briefs, it's just like the best of both best worlds. Of both. You get yeah. like, I, it's uh, long, it's warm, you get the, the extra fucking cradle, yeah. soft cradle in your nutsack. It's fucking stellar, dude. I wore, like, uh, once you go boxer briefs, you never go back. I wore boxers until I was like 22. And when I first got boxer briefs, it was like awkward and weird. And I was like, I don't like how tight it is and weird. But then... Over time, it's just like a, a small hand just holding your genitals at all time. It's so and good. It, it just, yeah. It's so much more comfortable, especially if, if you're like me. I wear jeans like 95% of the time when I'm just wearing normal outfits. And, yeah, and I mean, like if you get those kind of pair that like really occasionally ride up or when you're sitting down, they're kind of squeezing. So you, you get that little layer of just cupping your balls and not having them do really crazy okay. things in there. Yeah. Let me just vent real quick. You know what I really hate in movies? This movie trope. You know how some people, uh, sometimes you notice those little things like nobody ever says bye on the phone when they're in the (laughs) movies, in a movie. Right. One of those things that really bothers the shit out of me is when a guy puts on his pants and he never has to adjust his boxers in a movie. Mm -hmm. He slides on his Ah. pants like, oh, dude, my boxers always got up my ass crack. I have to readjust my balls. It's not that easy. You know, you know what really pisses me off, Kaya, in that same vein? It's a huge nitpick and adds absolutely nothing to the movie. Why don't people ever cough or sneeze or, or mess up while talking? <laughs> Literally ever. It's completely different. No, but, different, I, but, uh, but it's the same like, concept. It's like when people are talking, yeah. they sometimes sneeze or they say something incorrectly. That never happens in movies, ever. And once you notice it, it gets really annoying. it would make for a bad it, No, it would wouldn't it make it be endearing and realistic and fun? Yeah, yeah. I've never oh, seen it Lord. done ever. Oh, you got you got up at grade eight or whatever the hell that Bo Burner movie is for being realistic, as if you'd like a realistic movie where they're readjusting their fucking boxer briefs every two <laughs> seconds. Like, all I'm saying is, I want to okay. be watching like a what? Batman movie where Batman's like sitting on the computer and like Alfred comes up and brings his tea and he just goes, "Thank you, Alfred." I <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, thank you, Alfred. Like I just want that. Just that's sure, just a bad taste. You, you just want, want the bloopers. You, yeah, like, I I don't get it, man. It's like. Ju- <laughs> Why would I want to watch John Wick, like, in the middle of shooting, like, 20 people just sneeze and cough and then get back to it? <laughs> yeah, cool. It would be funny. That would be good for comedy. Yeah, right. it's it's right. On the other hand. Flu. I think Andrew's just saying that every once in a while we all fuck up words. They yeah. aren't all oh, sure. perfect orders. We just came back yeah. from a TEDx talk perfectly delivered, and now they're talking so to If someone friends. fucked up their line or something, it would take me out here's, of the movie no, no, no. entirely. Here's a, here's like, a big one. Fucked up. Here's a, here's a big one I noticed that I think could actually be used well in writing, and it never happens unless it's directly for comedy. Why don't people ever interrupt or talk over each other? Ever. As, as you just interrupted and talked over me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> It's realistic. You do that. And it happens. But literally every conversation is, I'm talking, now you're talking, now I'm talking, now you're talking. No, it depends. It depends who you watch. You know, in Breaking Bad, 
I even I'm sure like there's a lot of fucking you know times where the stress and everything's getting to the characters and they're just yelling at each other yeah. and cutting each other I, off. I think movies do the interruption a lot, but there's two types: the correct type where the person is interrupted and they keep talking for a few seconds until they get that they're interrupted. And then the really shitty kind of interruption, which even big AAA blockbusters still do somehow, where the person getting interrupted somehow has some premonition and they stop talking a second yeah, before they get stops. interrupted. I hate that so much. I, I fucking just, hate that. I just want to see these. I, I'm not saying every movie has to do it. I'm not saying they're actual problems in movies, but I, I'd love to see a movie that just has these little touches of realism. Like, I don't know, two people are having a conversation and, and they, they order a lunch and then one guy comes up and they bring the food and he goes, oh, I asked for fries instead of coleslaw, but whatever. And then they keep talking like, like shit that just happens in real life. Just add some realism, some personality. I don't know. Love to see that. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind being an actor and doing acting shit and doing all that stuff. I think that'd yeah. be really interesting because like, uh, I'm interested in the filmmaking and I'm interested in the process. The only yeah. issue is that I, I can't really like be connected to my YouTube channel if I do go into acting at all because I wear a helmet and I like to keep my anonymity. So it's just that awkward thing. It's like, I'd like to be an actor, but at the same time, I don't want my face everywhere. It's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Especially if you're a fucking actor. Yeah. Be a voice actor. That'd be easy. Just moved to Japan. One of their, uh, one of their biggest people is a dude who just wears a mask. Everything he does. Oh, oh, really? If you move to Japan, you could be a porn star. They only have one working porn oh, star. That's, that's a male. <laughs> Dude, I had I had an idea for Swagger Souls porno. Ooh. Right? Ooh, tell us about it. So, I I would write it, right? It would just be me coming back from the from dinner with this girl. <laughs> and then we go we go into oh, an innocent. apartment or or a house or whatever. It's a bedroom. And, you know, it's just, I write the cheesy, hilarious porn dialogue, and then afterwards I go, oh, here, let me slip into something more comfortable. And then I walk into the bathroom, and then I walk out, and I'm a six-foot-three giant ripped black guy with a giant dick wearing my helmet, and then I just dub in my audio <laughs> the whole time. It's a good concept. I think, I think it'd be hilarious. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to pitch to a porn studio if they offer me money. What would you call it? <laughs> Uh, hmm. I don't know. Work. So it's a it's a working title. <laughs> still still writing the script. Yeah, because because porn's <laughs> a have lot such of intricacies. A, yeah, extensive script writing in porn. <laughs> yeah. He's got to make sure the sneezes seem authentic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that just for you. Sneeze and cough. <laughs> yeah, well. I, I wanted to say thanks, Charlie, for uh, for doing that shit for my one mil special. I appreciate it. Oh, of course, man. I'm glad you had me on. I, I'm sorry to have stolen this show from all the other people you had on. Though. I didn't, wait, I didn't wait, wait, wait. That, was, the that tie, was Charlie? The tie, the tie. Wait, you said yeah. that someone in that video was you. That was Charlie? What? I know. No, no, Fuck no. That. He was... Uh, you lied to me. That what, what, was, that was that a really... It, it was my uh, one mil face reveal video uh, where... I I made like this big puzzle and I made it really fucking weird and all this shit. That was it, it was such an interesting process because I wanted to get a bunch of YouTubers to be featured in it and I wanted to make it like this really hype intense video that gets mm -hmm. people hyped up. And you know, the payoff pissed a lot of people off because what they had to do is they had to find a link in the video. I hit a link in the video, along with two reversed audio clips that they had to reverse, then find the, the link with, and it was just this big thing. I expected it to take longer. It took a guy 40 minutes to find out. <laughs> and then it, it, it led to an Inger link, and then uh, it was a picture that they had to tweet at me. And the first person to tweet it at me, I would follow and then DM my quote-unquote face. And it was up to them whether or not they wanted to share it. I wanted to make it like this big special thing. Soon uh -huh. as the guy, soon as the guy got it, he was like, "Oh, cool! I don't want to. I don't want to share it." And then he announced it. <laughs> so disappointed. <And> then, <laughs> so, well, he was like, he was like, "I want to keep it for myself." And I was like, "Word!" So he tweeted out like, "Oh, yeah, I, I want to keep it for myself for now." He got death threats. People tried hacking into his Twitter. Uh, people were pretending to be him 
uh, and were asking for money wow. to show people my face. And it was this pathetic. big clusterfuck. And I was just like, yeah, this is fucking weird. And so I told the guy, I'm like, look, at any point you feel pressured or you feel scared for your safety or whatever, just let me know. We can Suck organize a release. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Fuck that. I, did I felt really bad about it. Yeah. But the funny thing is, is that what I sent him is that I had my dad take a picture of me standing 20 feet away from his iPhone 4 in the dark in portrait mode. And then he took a picture of that, and then I took that picture, put it into paint.net, got a quarter of my face out of it, blew it up, added some blur, and then saved it, and that was that was the picture. Sounds like a so, Bigfoot sighting. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, was pretty, it was pretty much just a big, a big fucking, like, juke. But uh, I, I think, you know, that's could all you, I wanted so to could give you, people. Could you kind of make a defining feature out of your face at all, or was it just like a, a blur? You can see my eyebrow and my hair. So, in there. so then, <laughs> in my you, eye. That was have you been it. recognized in person then? Because I mean, you have a very distinct voice. I'm just nope, really? never. Wow, never that been is, recognized. That is That's super, astonishing. Well, do you go out in public? Do you go out in public? Yeah, of course. I go. I go out in public all the fucking time. I'm waiting for the day then I go out in public and I see a guy wearing some of my merch. I just want to look at him. I want to <laughs> stare at him and have him stare at me and have eye contact for like at least a second. And then I'll turn around and walk away and just feel good knowing that that person saw me <laughs> and didn't know it was me. A bus drives by and you're nowhere to be seen as he starts to connect <laughs> the dots in his head. But yeah, like that's the interesting thing. And I feel like, I feel like a lot of the people that, you know, that watch me or whatever would be the kind of people that if they did go up to me and be like, Hey, you sound like swagger souls. Are you swagger souls? Then I'll just be like, what'd you say to me? I, who, what, what are you talking about? they will be like swagger souls. Be like, I don't know what the fuck that is. Who are you? And then they'll probably just be like, Oh, sorry, sorry. You know, I must've been mistaken. And then they'll walk away. Should be really aggressive about it. Like for the last time, uh, <laughs> start I actually shit. had this, I had this one fucking incident that was really weird back when I was living in, I, I leased a house for six months and I, and I lived out of there and I had a video and I forgot to blur out a sign. So like the address became kind of known, but it's not like it was everywhere. But what had happened was I was in the process of moving out of my house. So I believe I, I took some of my equipment, some of my like clothes and shit and I drove it back to my to, to my other house, like you know, my, my dad's. And while I was gone, my landlord was watching the house. And what happened was apparently a bunch of kids came up, like like maybe six or seven kids came up to the house, knocked on the door, looking for me, like like they were trying to they were trying to fucking see what I look like. And they knocked on the door. My landlord answered them and told them to fuck off. It was really weird. Really fucking weird that just people would come to my house unannounced. Well, that's the risk of the internet stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's why I like my anonymity. In fact, if you go on fucking like Swagger Souls Reddit, which I don't even run, uh, like there are fucking people trying to find out where I live. They're like, he either lives in New York or New Jersey, or he lives in Pennsylvania, or you know, they narrowed it down to the East Coast and anywhere where there's a Wawa because, you know, I, I've referenced Wawa. If you don't know what Wawa is, it's like a fucking convenience store that, you know, it's like a 7-Eleven, but it sells hoagies too or, or subs or whatever the fuck you want to call it. I don't know. But sell sandwiches. Don't they have them in Tampa? I thought there was a yeah. Wawa in Tampa. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe they do have they it do. in Tampa. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. But, but these fucking wackos on the internet are trying to fucking find out more about me for some fucking reason, instead of leaving me alone. I don't know what the deal is. It's sad. Yeah, but what, what would you like to say to these people right now if they're <laughs> listening? Stay away from my house. I might have a gun. Ooh, and now Swagger Soul's arrested for death threats. <laughs> well, I said might. I said might. I'm very and careful they with might my words. Arrest you. Let's see what happens. <laughs> ah, <laughs> One of them's right. like an FBI detective on the case. Got him, boys. Do you think maybe uh, further down the line, like another year or two, do you... Uh, I'll, I'll rephrase it. Do you think you'll ever show your face or reveal personal things about yourself on the internet? It's an inevitability that I've come to accept and my family and friends have told me that I need to come to accept that there'll be a point in time where my face is public, where 
you know, I'll be out with my, you know, like other YouTube friends, you know, like at an event, like we'll attend an event and then we'll go to a bar and then one of them might get recognized. And then because I'm with them, they'll assume that, you know, I'm swagger souls and they'll connect the dots and bam, my fucking face is out there. Cause they'll snap the picture on their iPhone. You should, uh, and then, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, you know, it's just one of those, it's one of those things that, you know, I'm prepared for, but the thing that I like about anonymity, especially, you know, with YouTube and stuff is that I, I reap the rewards of having this process, this creative expression through my videos. And then, you know, I get to share it with people and people really enjoy it. And people like my sense of humor and, and people like, you know, what I'm doing online and, you know, it's, it's, it's all right money. And, and I'm getting bio, right. I'm doing all this unique shit. I'm traveling and it's really cool, but I can still go out and get milk and not get recognized and harassed and, you know, I don't have to worry about some fucking dickhead 19-year-old fucking calling a SWAT team to my house to throw a fucking flashbang through my sliding glass door. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I, I like that part of it. But I know one way or another, you know, like at some point, uh, the two worlds are going to merge and I'm going to have to stop living like Hannah Montana. So it's weird. It's definitely weird. You should, Interesting that you chose Hannah Montana over Batman. I thought Batman <laughs> would have been a cooler reference. No, dude, definitely but, uh, hey. fucking Hannah Montana. I'm living the best of both worlds. Well, thanks again for coming on, Swagger Souls. Really appreciate it, man. Is there anything you want to plug, shout out, talk about? Of course, yeah. Shout out to my friend Dave, my boy Dave. Love you, David. Uh, subscribe to me on YouTube, uh, Swagger Souls on YouTube. It, pretty self-explanatory and also check out my podcast misfits podcast misfits podcast ladies and gentlemen uh, if you want to hear stories about six fucking idiots that that sometimes do <laughs> drugs and do wacky stories overseas <laughs> and the misfits podcast is for you um so after you're done listening to every episode of the official podcast and you are just so hungry and need more go to the misfits podcast because it is just pog dope I don't know what Pog right. means, but it's Pog Champ. Pog, Pog Champ. Charlie, you are you it's migrated to Twitch, Twitch and thing. you don't fucking you don't, know Pog you don't, Champ, you loser. You don't you don't speak in Twitch emotes, you is that, fucking normie. Is it is that, that Poggers thing? Is that what just, that means? Just stop yeah. talking. God damn it. I don't know the Twitch culture Second yet. I'm still learning. Embarrassment here. It's just like I'm fucking like I'm fucking explaining it to my grandpa. I'll yeah. learn one day. <laughs> those things in Star Wars, the birds. Yeah, those porgs. are pogs. Aren't those they? are pogs. Pogs. Yeah, Porg. those are those are uh, marketing gimmicks. Pogs. Uh, yeah. If you if you look in your general chat, that's pog champ, and and this is Monka S. Oh, it's that. Okay, it's the expressions. Yes, the emotes. And this is Tape some weed. Monka. Oh no, this is weed. <laughs> no one can say this. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh great, that's <laughs> weed. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, you want right. to run through your spiel, Andrew and Jackson? Thank you, everyone, for watching this week's episode of the official podcast. Really appreciate you sticking around for an hour and a bit to listen to us talk. Um, if you want to help us out even more, you can head on over to patreon.com slash the official podcast, see what we've got to offer there. Uh, as always, appreciate everything. Love you all. Andrew. If you want to hear Swagger Souls' real name and what state he lives in, <laughs> listen to this podcast on the audio formats. Or you can you can sit on YouTube and get the get the neutered experience. That's fine. That's fine. We also might tell lies on the on the podcast. You don't know. You'll have to find out by listening on an audio format, not on YouTube. So go try it. Yeah, do it. That's it. All right. Thanks again, Swagger. Right. Everyone, no problem. All right. Bye. Bye.